Do you know what I think? But on BMW, sometimes a humble door handle, just a door handle, can actually prevent the car from starting. Now, I know you find it probably incredible, probably you think I'm telling fibs a bit, but if you're new to BMWs or you're new to this channel, you'll find that nothing will surprise you with BMWs. It's a comfort access one, most of you probably already know this, but I bet there's hundreds of thousands of people out there who don't know it. This video is going to blow you away. Car didn't start. Let's check it out. You're going to love this. A lot of oscilloscope action in this video. Um, good fault find this. I really enjoyed it. Let's get into it. Well, I did. I managed to get me uh, my fat ass in there. Not as fat. I've lost a bit of weight over the years. Right. Let's see. Engine start fault. It's probably a, it, removing a certain to ignition lock. Ignition lock's not working, is it? Let's disconnect the IBS. Please work. If this works. It's going to be amazing. Unfortunately, my miracle video, which it could have been a miracle, was just complete bullshit. So usually that can bring on the Terminal 50. It's even bloody worse now. So we've got six and a half volts. Jesus. See how it's cycling like that? There's something going on. There's an active drain going on, I think. Now we're inside. We have another issue. I've got the charger now. But it says in Finnish language, the battery's faulty. Yeah. See how it says Aku VR in it? And it won't charge it. It won't charge it. See how it's trying to charge it. I'm going to show you a tip, a little trick to fool this charger. And I'll show you what to do. So what you do is you leave your charger on, but then you get this jump start to what we have, which isn't so kosher. It's quite big, thick, chunky terminals. And you want to kind of put that on as best you can. And we're going to kind of use the boost pack as a bit of a trick, really. When it's so discharged, the battery, and I guess it's even more discharged, it just won't charge it for safety reasons, you see. Now we'll try that again. When it comes on land, then you see it starts to charge it, you see. Slowly. And it should, in theory, while I go get my coffee, remain charging. There, yeah. So what we need to do on cars like this when we haven't got any ignition, we need to put in the chassis number, the last seven digits, in Ista. It's easier with Ista, actually, believe it or not. And we're going to go in through the backup K line. Now, we're actually going to set up a vehicle connection. Right, we've got no comms to everything because of this comfort access issue. But as you notice, the CA, the cast, the combi, the FZD, they're all lit up now. Well, why are they green? Well, we've gone in through K line. There's still no ignition. And it's still very limited, but they've woken up. So they've gone from orange to green. That's the reason. But there's still no comms with Terminal 15. And what I'm doing now is I'm just, I've managed to get into the cast without the ignition being on. It's a very unusual way, but if you go through the K line, you can do that. And we're looking at the fault counter for the steering lock, because that's common on E-Series, isn't it, for having faulty steering locks. And what's quite surprising is, although there's no ignition, guess what? We've got no faults with steering lock, so we don't need to start thinking about that. So I knew we had some voltage because there's a relay there, and when I, obviously when I pull it out, the glove box light goes out. So I know we've got a, a relay working. And then I decided what I'll do is, because... As you can see from the, from the video footage I took, there's nothing wrong with the ELV, the steering lock. In that sense, now it's working, of course. Nothing wrong with that, in that sense. But what I have done, I've disconnected the comfort access as well. Now, when I disconnected the comfort access, I'm gonna have to now put it back on and double check, because that could sometimes cause it. So the comfort access is buried behind all this paneling, and no one ever usually knows there's any control units there, because you don't really see, all you see is a wire like that. But I can guarantee that this is a troublesome bastard. And it, I've had a lot of issues with this in the past. And that's the connector there. And as you can see on that connector, that's a connector actually looks like it's been modified at some point. There is K can on there. So in the end, it was just a, a simple control unit failure and it was bringing down the bus. But yet when we look at the K can bus, the, the, you know, they didn't really kind of seem to affect the signal. And I thought it would actually. And in fact, some of the messaging now is looking quite the same as it was when it was plugged in. So what it could have done, it could have actually shorted out on the 12 volt side probably. And something for safety reasons as would have disengaged in the junction box electronics under there to cut the voltage to everything. For example, the cast wake up signal, for example, it could have, the cast could have cut out. This is the comfort access function. I have the same thing on my i3 and it, even the handle looks the same. So we can plug it back in to see which one's faulty essentially. So it's fixed, isn't it? If you can consider having no comfort access fixed, um, everything seems to be working now. And our vehicle tree now looking a lot healthier. 
and of course CA we've disconnected so that won't communicate and we could even call that off and make it disappear if we wanted to do. More interesting now, uh, as I'm making these videos, obviously I'm recording it at this, at this time, um, things can change before I end up getting to finishing the video when I go on and you know when I do all the editing. Guys just run back, you know, after I've built the bloody thing up, he wants to diagnose the reason why the comfort access is faulty. So that's going to be really good. So tomorrow, at some point, what's going to happen is I'm going to end up um, checking the comfort access bus. But before I do that, I'll just pull off the uh, handles in turn. I'll pull the driver's handle off. And then after that, I'll pull off the um, passenger handle. Right, so we're actually on the sub bus now. So that white wire there now, that goes straight to the cast module from the comfort access module, which is this one here. There's three wires, all white cast module and then the other two go to the right door handle at the front of the car and the left door handle now i've just saved this lovely frame and i'm glad i did because i'm going to explain what it is so that's the signal what the comfort access module sends to the cast module on the sub bus the single wire bus and that um, message is the locking message and what that means is when i press the key fob which we'll see when i start the scope again here that message will be output on the bus. So we know that the module is working beautifully. And what this is, this is called um, serial decoding. So there's the synchronization frame. There's another synchronization frame at the end after the message. And the message contents here, which you can see the hexadecimal there, these hexadecimals, that's the actual contents of the message telling the cast module that it's been locked. And the cast module obviously uh, is responsible for the locking and security of the car. So that is essentially good because it means that there's nothing wrong with that module. Now I've found the fault and I'm going to show you what it is in a minute, but let's just keep going. So in standby mode, it, it sits at 12 volts. It was quite tricky to get this signal set up actually compared to the CAN bus one. Can you see these little pulses? Little pulses there. Quite normal is that. Okay. There's your unlock signal. Lock signal. And that literally is the fault, just a bad comfort access handle. So when I actually put that handle back in, you'll see that the scope then shows that it pulls the ground, it pulls everything down to the ground. And then that was the main issue, that's why everything was being killed off. All that is going to go straight to the car. So I'll show you a diagram shortly, but let's just look at the scope trace. Straight away, you see it's pulled to ground now. And what it's done, it's actually shorted to ground. So the whole system is shorted to ground now. This is, the, this is the system in a nutshell. I'm gonna break it down for you dead easy and I'm gonna switch to front cam, so let's do it. Right, so you're seeing on them scope traces what was going on. So we've got comfort access, car access system, CAS, comfort access module. This is the one in the trunk, this is the main one. So our PA bus, passive passive go bus it's called, was shorted here on the on the handle. You've got three, three wires, signal, 12 volts on the ground. Well, at some point it's short into the ground supply and uh, it's going all the way here and it's killing all these signals. The CAS is seeing an active short and it's disengaging itself from the bus. It's just shutting down completely. However, we used ISTA, didn't we? And we got in through K-Line. And when we went through K-Line, we managed to get from this being orange, it went green when K-Line woke it up. We couldn't really read any fault cause, but we could read that the ELV steering lock wasn't faulty. So I knew it wasn't that. Plus we had the glove box light on and we had the footwell light on. So I knew there was some sort of electricity. The issue is that when CAS is disengaged, it's going to disengage Terminal 15, whoop, wake up. And everything on the car needs this to operate. So things like DME, DSC, the combi itself, you know, the instruments cluster, they all need Terminal 15, wake up. And that comes from CAS. And if this is shorted, this ain't going to give you Terminal 15, which is why we have no comms with certain things. Also, why we had comms with other things, because some, not everything needs Terminal 15 wake up. So the ones that need 15 whoop is that. And because we didn't see any steering lock faults, we know we've not got a steering lock issue. Now, a lot of places might have actually basically said, change the steering lock because it's kind of same sort of thing. But one last thing I'll leave you with is imagine the other fault, what I thought it could be, would be the intelligent battery sensor. It's exactly the same situation as a door handle. You've got three ways. You've got like a LIN bus, you've got a CAS, Sorry, you've got a LIN bus and you've got two wires of power and a ground. Again, 
the sensor on the battery can do the same. It can short out exactly the same as a door handle and give you exactly the same results. No cast, wake up, disconnect it, job done. Does that on E60s a lot as well. We hope you like that video. Uh, a lot of places I know might have done that a bit differently. It didn't take me that long, do it? Uh, video footage makes it look a bit drawn out, but uh, it's quite a common issue. But if you're not, if you're new to BMWs, you're new to fault finding. That's something that you would never know, isn't it? Because the central locking's working, you wouldn't think there'd be anything wrong with door locks, would you? But comfort access and C, and CA buttons is different than CAS. It works the same way, but it's a separate system and it can bring everything down as you've seen. It can destroy the entire car, leave you stranded completely. Of course, if you just unplug it, you'll be, you'll be laughing and you'll get your car back on the road. It's the sort of thing that if you didn't know, you would never know, would you? So I hope you liked it. Don't forget, I've put a link from my subscription service. We've got to just shy of 20 members. There's a couple of videos already and videos, um, I'm going to do videos, for example, such as this video, I'm going to flash on now for you. So what this is here is a very, very basic motor and it doesn't even have brushes, it's terrible. I've put a noise filter on, but it's not that great. And what I'm doing, I'm just uh, showing you how the putts with modulation works on this motor using the oscilloscope. And I've got the old motor driver, which I bought a couple of weeks back off Temu. And there you can see the voltage changing as the pulse width modulation sort of increases. And these are the sort of things I'm gonna be doing on training videos, essentially. Um, how things work and you know for a fiver a month it's not really so bad way to learn is it and this is something i've put together myself uh, i bought the motor but I've, I've made a few additions to it and it should be pretty good you should be able to learn quite a lot from this for essentially not a lot of money at all and what videos like that are is little things to show how things for example in that video our pulse width modulation works now the videos i'm going to be working on it's less than a fiver a month and you're going to be basically sort of supporting me in that sense um to grow this tiktok experience in that sense and i'm hoping i can teach everybody the skills that i've amassed over the last 31 years in the industry and if you're serious about getting good and getting better at fault finding whether it's for diy reasons or for your job then i can offer you quite a lot and um, there'll be a live coming up soon a couple of days i think i'm going to do that i'll announce that soon and i'll run that from home and um, we're just going to be chatting about stuff and then there's more lessons going to be added. I've done two lessons already for voltage and current, and the next will be resistance. And I do them from home. So if you want to learn for very little money, you'll be supporting me for buying equipment like you've just seen on that video. I just flashed up for you. Thanks very much.